Hello, I'm Derek Walker. I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. And today we're going to start a short series on a controversial issue right now. I guess it's always been controversial. And that is the Sabbath. What place does the Sabbath have for Christians today? There's a lot of confusion around on this. Are Christians under the Sabbath law? After all, it's one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, if so, how are we to keep it? Like the Jews or, or differently? One Christian belief that has developed in church history is that we're still under the Ten Commandment law and the, and the Sabbath in particular. But, the teaching goes, the Christian Sabbath now has been changed to Sunday uh, to commemorate the resurrection. Uh, others, uh, for example, Seventh-day Adventists, say that we are still under the law uh, but the Sabbath, by definition, is Saturday, really, starting on Friday evening. And therefore, we must meet for worship on Saturdays, as the Jews do. And, and for them, even, it's a salvation issue. Uh, some Messianic Jews teach that certainly believing Jews should obey the law, including the Sabbath. And some would say even Gentiles should get back to their Jewish roots. They're grafted in to the olive tree, uh, and, and, and we must therefore, uh, or should, keep the Sabbath. Uh, some say, on the other hand, that there is no longer a Sabbath law that we are under, and uh, although Sunday worship is a matter of church history based on the resurrection, and maybe just practicality uh, and convenience, because for many it's a good day because uh, they, they're not working on that day, but despite all of that, it's not obligatory. We're not under Sabbath law. Yes, we're commanded to be part of a church, but in theory, anyway, any day is as good as any other. And so, what is right? That's what we'll be tackling here. It is vital to address these issues so we don't come under confusion or condemnation or bondage. And fundamental to this whole debate is to understand the law of Moses and what its relationship is to us now. Uh, actually, this issue is quite straightforward biblically if we just stay with what the scripture says. Well, let's make the first point, and that is this. The old covenant, or the, the covenant of Moses, the Mosaic covenant, which is recorded in the Bible from Exodus chapter 20, right through to the end of Deuteronomy, it was a covenant between God and Israel. That's an important point. It was done through Moses, who represented Israel. Therefore, it didn't involve Gentiles at all, or the church for that matter. Let's read that in Exodus chapter 19, verse 3 to 8. Moses went up to God at Mount Sinai, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, This Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. Verse 4, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Verse 5, now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you will be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So he's talking about Israel being different from all the other nations because they have this special covenant with God that the other nations don't have. And these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And so that Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. And this is when the law was given to Israel, but specifically not to the Gentiles or the church. And one of the purposes of the law was to make Israel holy, to separate Israel from all the other nations as a special people. Deuteronomy 4, 7 and 8 says this also. What other nation is so great to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? And so Moses was saying that the law of Moses was specifically for Israel, and that's what marked them out as different from the other nations. Psalm 147, 
verse 19 and 20 says, He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. Malachi 4.4 4 says, Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. I know it's a very obvious point, but it is very far-reaching. The law of Moses was for Israel. Now, within the covenant provision of the old covenant is the law of Moses. That included some 613 commandments as well as provision of blood sacrifice for a covering for sin and many other ceremonies that spoke of Christ. Now, let's quickly list for you the purposes of the law of Moses. Number one, it revealed the holiness and righteousness of God that, and the righteousness required to please God. Number two, it provided a rule of conduct uh, for Old Testament believers, but not a means of salvation. Um, that has always been through faith in the Messiah. Number three, it provided occasions for individual and corporate worship. Number four, it was designed to keep the Jews as a distinct holy people. And that involved special rules for worship and diet, even how you cut your beards, even for the clothes you wear. And in this way, it created a middle wall of partition between Jews and Gentiles. It, it's, it separated Jews from Gentiles and clearly defined Jews as a special people of God. Number five, it revealed sin and our need for salvation. And actually, it, it magnified sin in the process because when you bring in a law, it actually provides the sin nature a base of operation. In other words, just sin now becomes even worse because now it's a transgression of the law. Number six, it revealed to the sinner that he cannot save himself. And number seven, in this way, it drove men to Christ, to find salvation in Christ. So the law is good. The law was wonderful, it, and it was designed ultimately as a revelation of God and to lead men to faith in the Messiah. Now, in the law, the Sabbath, which is what we're honing in on, had a very special place a special importance in the law of Moses. And uh, we'll see why shortly. Now, let's make this point now. The legal observance of the Sabbath begins not with Adam, not with Abraham, but with Moses. This is clearly indicated in Scripture. In, there is no command to keep the Sabbath before Moses, or neither is there any record of anyone whether in secular records or in the biblical record, of anyone keeping the Sabbath before Moses. And that's why it was an effective sign of Israel's special covenant with God. We're going to see that the importance of the Sabbath is that it was the sign of the covenant of Moses that marked Israel out as a special people of God. And because this was a new thing, this was an, a distinctive thing that made Israel different from the nations. The Sabbath was a clear sign that they were keeping their covenant with God. And it helped them remember that their specialness in their covenant with God. Now, some say that it was a Sabbath is a creation ordinance based on Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Let me read that to you. On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now, notice, this only talks about what God did, not what man should do on the seventh day. All right? God ceased from his work of creation, having completed it. However, there's no ordinance or command here of a rest day for man. The key word, Shabbat, is not used here. And if the Sabbath rest for man, yes, God rested, we're told that, but, if the Sabbath re but there's no command for man to rest on the Sabbath here. It's something that God held back until the time of Moses. If it was a command from the beginning, then we would have uh, found it in the records that, of people keeping it. 
that we don't see it in the Noah's covenant or the Abrahamic covenant or people like Job, we don't see them practicing it, even though other things like circumcision, marriage, tithing and all that, that's in there. You'd have thought something so important would have got a mention somewhere. Well, had it been something for all people everywhere, then of course God couldn't have used it as a special sign for Israel with Moses, which he did, as we'll see. And so the Sabbath began with Moses, and uh, that's confirmed. In Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 14, it says, You have made known to them your holy Sabbath and commanded them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses. When was the Sabbath revealed? It was at the time of Moses. The first occurrence of the Shabbat, which means rest or ceasing from work, uh, this first uh, occurrence uh, where we see that man is required, obligated to rest on the seventh day, the Saturday, that's found in Exodus chapter 16. Just after the Exodus from Egypt, Verse 23 to 30 in the story of the manna. And Israel were told, do, do not collect the manna on the seventh day. Why? Because it's a Sabbath, a day of rest. And um, they were told, only collect enough manna for each day. And uh, they discovered initially that if they tried to hoard the manna for the next day, it would go off. It would become corrupted. And, and then... On the sixth day, they were told to gather twice as much bread because that would see them through two days. They weren't to work on the Sabbath. And then it, Moses explained why. He said, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Verse 23. Now he used this full description here because this was a new idea. No definite article is used. It says it's a, sab a holy Sabbath. It wasn't known before, you see. God was actually using the manna situation to train them in Sabbath observance. Let's read on in verse 23. It says, Bake what you'll bake today, boil what you will boil, and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept till morning. Now normally when they did that, it went corrupt. But this time it didn't. They laid it up till morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. So God was sh showing them his approval of them keeping the Sabbath. He was teaching them that it was special, making it holy. And Moses said in verse 25, eat that today, for it's today's the Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you will gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Now some people, verse 27, went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? You know, it's interesting that the fact that so many people disobeyed and tried to gather the manna on the Sabbath, that shows that they were not accustomed to keeping the Sabbath and just resting on that day. God was training them in a new lifestyle. Verse 29 confirms. See, he says, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his house. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. See how they were being trained in the new thing. They were to rest at home. And uh, soon after this, the law would be given that would spell out the Sabbath rest in much more detail. Not just not collecting manna, but other things too. Let's make this point next. Number point three. The Sabbath command was given great emphasis to Israel. It was emphasized so much by God that he put it in the Ten Commandments. Verse, chapter 20, verse 8 to 11. God says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Keep it special, different from other days. Six days your labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work. Not you, your son, your daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, or animals, or the stranger in your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And so 
Here, God says, remember. Now, that, first of all, ref refers to the fact that it's been mentioned before. That was with the incident of the manna. He says, this is what I'm talking about. But also, the word remember the Sabbath means that it has a special role of being a, a remembrance, an outward sign of the covenant that, whose role is to cause us to remember, to bring to the forefront of our mind that we are in covenant. It's just like in the new covenant, we have communion as our remembrance. It's the outward sign of the covenant that we regularly take to remember the covenant. In marriage, it's wearing your wedding ring. That is the sign of the covenant. And God says here, that the Sabbath is the sign of the covenant so that they would constantly remember their covenant with God. They were to keep it special, different from other days. To profane the Sabbath was actually to treat it like an ordinary day and the penalty for that was death. Well, if you're under the law of Moses, then you should also accept the penalty for breaking the Sabbath. Well, the emphasis was on rest. Resting at home with your family, building the family relationships and having spiritual refreshment at home. Not so much on corporate worship, although synagogues came in later on of the Babylonian captivity. And we see that the creation week is indeed given as the basis for the Sabbath command. Um, God rested on the seventh day and now God is inviting man to enter into his rest. And in that way, it was based on the creation week. However, that doesn't mean that the, this command of the Shabbat was given to man before it wasn't. It was only given to man at the time of Moses. And it was specifically for Israel, to mark Israel out as a special people. Well, the Sabbath had a special role in the Moses covenant as the outward sign of the covenant, just like the rainbow was for Noah just like circumcision was for Abrahamic covenant. And that's why not keeping the Sabbath was such a serious offense for the Jews, because it was a denial of the covenant. It was like treason. It was the ordained way of accept showing that they accepted the covenant with God. And it marked them out different from other nations. And it kept their special identity. And this confirms that mandatory Sabbath observance was new with Moses as a mark of this covenant, and it was unique for Israel. This is explicitly told us in Exodus 31, verse 12 to 17. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign. There it is, a sign between me and you for the generations to come, that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy, different from the other nations. Observe the Sabbath because it's holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it will be put to death. Whoever does any work on that day will be cut off from his people. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh is a Sabbath rest. Holy to the Lord. Whoever works on the Sabbath day must be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath celebrating it for the generations to come as, an everlast, uh, as a lasting covenant. Here it is again. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained and rested. And, and in Ezekiel chapter 20, it confirms the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant God made with Israel at the time of the Exodus. It doesn't apply to Gentiles at all. It says in verse 10, I led them out of Egypt and brought them into the desert. I gave them my decrees and made known to them my laws, for the man who obeys them will live by them. Also, I gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between us, so that they would know that I, am the, I the Lord, made them holy. So see, the Sabbath was given at the time of the Exodus, not before, and only to Israel. Then verse nine says, 19, I am the Lord your God, follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws, keep my Sabbaths holy, that they may be a sign between us that, that you will know that I am the Lord your God. And as a sign of the covenant God made with Israel at the Exodus, it doesn't apply 
to the church or to the Gentiles. It's, and it's a sign of the Mosaic Covenant. Therefore, it's only in force as long as the Mosaic Covenant is in force. We'll have more to say about that. Now let's turn to the Deuteronomy 5. These are the foundational passages for the Sabbath. Deuteronomy 5.12 confirms it began at the Exodus. Observe the Sabbath day, it says, by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you will labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. And on it you shall do no work and none of your animals and none of your family. Remember, he goes on to say, that you were slaves in Egypt. And that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. I want you to notice something very interesting here. God relates the Sabbath to Israel and the Exodus. You were slaves in Egypt, but I set you free. Therefore, celebrate the Sabbath, is what he's saying. The Sabbath began after the Exodus because it was based on it. In the Exodus, God delivered Egypt from slavery in Egypt. And in Egypt, they never had any days off. They had to work every day of the week. And so they enjoyed their Sabbath rest. And as they enjoyed it, they were to remember how God had set them free from slavery. Therefore, the Sabbath was a sign given to them that in their rest, they would remember their covenant with God and how he graciously set them free from slavery. And so it only applies to Israel. Because you haven't been set free from slavery in Egypt. The Sabbath rest was a remembrance of their deliverance from Egypt and of their possessing the promised land and, and entering into the land of rest. And it is also a type and a picture of our salvation in Christ because we too have been delivered from the power of darkness and we have been put into a place of rest where we have the assurance of our sins forgiven. And every promise of God is yes and amen in Christ. He's done the work and we just cease from our own works and by faith we enter into the rest. We enter into our promised land. And so the, the Sabbath was a type that, that looked forward to the fulfillment in Christ when Christ would come and do his work and bring us into his rest. It was a shadow and the substance was fulfilled in Christ. And when you trust in Christ, you cease from trusting your own works and you enter into rest. That's how the New Testament teaches the Sabbath in Hebrews chapter 4. Now, we've seen that the Sabbath was not observed from Adam to Moses and it was only given to Israel as part, an essential part of the law of Moses, the sign of the covenant that they had with God. And there's no that basis, therefore, to believe that the Sabbath applies to Gentile Christians or indeed to the church as a whole. Moreover, believers of any type, Jew or Gentile, are no longer under the old covenant of Moses. The New Testament's very clear about that. But we are now under the new covenant in Christ, which has replaced the old covenant. So there's two reasons why Gentiles aren't under the Sabbath law, the law of Moses. Number one, we're Gentiles. Number two, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant has passed away. The, the law of Moses is no longer operative for us today because of Christ. Through the cross, the Old Covenant is rendered op inoperative and replaced by the New Covenant in Christ. So we're not under the law of Moses. Rather, we're under the law of Christ. So it doesn't follow that the Sabbath automatically applies to us today just because it applied to Moses to Israel before the cross. If we want to decide the issue one way or the other, we need to study the New Testament and see if the New Testament t tells us the Sabbath applies. Actually, the prophets predicted a time when the law of Moses with its Sabbaths and feast, feasts would cease. Hosea 2.11, God says, I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths, all her appointed feasts. It saw a time when the old covenant would come to an end. The shadow would go because the substance was coming. When we turn to the New Testament, 
We find that all the teaching of Jesus and the apostles, there is no command to the church to keep the Sabbath day. That's an amazing omission if it was so, something so important. The obvious conclusion is Sabbath observance is not part of the new covenant with Christ and the church. We're free to keep it or not to keep it. And not only do we have an absence of any command to keep it, we have three passages of scripture that positively tell us that we are not under the Sabbath law that applied to Israel before the cross. And uh, these passages are Romans chapter 14, verse 4 to 6, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, and also Galatians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. And that's where we'll pick up next time and see more of this. And also we will answer objections that you may be thinking right now because you may be aware of other arguments for the Sabbath that I haven't addressed yet that you found persuasive. But we'll deal with that in this series. So do come back next week and we'll cover that as well. God bless.